Lewis and undefeated Jesse Thunder Ferguson. Both fighters have devastating power as we saw in the semifinals. Ferguson against Richard Scott. Oh, that's it. Stinging left and Scott down. Now we have a standing eight count in New Jersey. James Douglas didn't wait long to end his semifinal fight either against Deion Simpson using a big right hand to close the show. Strong right Whoa. and down he goes. Buster Douglas rounding up from outside of Atlantic City City limits. Don't miss the big punches tonight on ESPN. Weights, Douglas and Ferguson, and I, I guess just Buster and, and Thunder would almost kind of set it aside of uh, being something special tonight in the heavyweight finals for the East. Well, that's for sure. They are looking to win our Eastern <laughs> finals and move ahead in our ESPN heavyweight tournament, and they both have tremendous power. We saw both of them win their first round matches with uh, knockouts and uh, convincing knockouts at that, and I think that the key in this fight might be the fact that Buster Douglas has maybe better boxing skills, and he's a little bit bigger than Ferguson, but you can't, uh, when two heavyweights get together if one man has a good punch he's always in the fight and they won't have to look for each other because i kind of feel it's going to be straight ahead with nobody stopping the other oh I, yeah i think it's going to be action all the way and the likelihood of this fight going 10 rounds i think is extremely remote well the man they'll be looking to meet is tony anthony's who already advanced in the west as a heavyweight champion there by default over michael greer who'll go in for some surgery and he'll be watching this fight you know as again it'll be james douglas against jesse ferguson for the eastern division of our heavyweight championship on e ESPN along with the NABF champion Jackie Beard. Atlantic City is a buzz because we've got the heavyweights for the Eastern Division finals coming up. Jesse Ferguson against Buster Douglas and we'll find out which one will be going up against Tony Anthony a little bit later this year for the championship of the ESPN. Well Ferguson has a big punch but so does Douglas as Al Bernstein documents in this report Power punching Jesse Ferguson has his sights set on the ESPN title. And the 27-year-old from North Carolina showed his determination in the second round. Watch him here against Richard Scott. Solid left, right, and Scott is dazed and down in his own corner. Later in the round, the bomb fell again. Solid left, He's and out. Scott is out. By the fourth, Guts alone kept Scott standing, but not for long. Oh, that's it. Stinging left and Scott down. Now we have a standing eight count in New Jersey. But tonight, Jesse faces some thunder in Buster Douglas. The 25-year-old Columbus, Ohio native is also a banger with 14 KOs. He got here by dismantling Deion Simpson. That first round knockout may have stamped Douglas a favorite to win among the heavyweights in the East, but he knows Jesse Ferguson is a dangerous puncher. James, in his first victory in this tournament, I would think uh, Jesse Ferguson impressed you a little bit with his power. Yes, he did. He showed me that he had a, a lot of punching power, and he's a pretty good fighter. James, you would probably be considered at this point maybe the favorite among the Eastern heavyweights. Do you look at it that way? Well, I look at it as uh, definitely that I'm the favorite because I'm a world-class fighter and uh, I carry a, a, a lot of power myself and uh, I'm an excellent boxer and I can do a lot of things in the ring. So therefore, I wouldn't see why not. I wouldn't be considered a favorite in the tournament. Jesse, your win over Richard Scott was pretty dramatic in the first round of this tournament. And even though you came in with a lot of knockouts, some people were surprised at your power. Um, I train, you know, I train uh, mostly for my power, my quickness. My, my trainer was telling me that my quickness, power come with the quickness. Don't really, you know, rely on it, but do it as fast as you can and power will be there. Well, both the fighters rather quiet this afternoon and talking to Al Bernstein, but the noise with Buster and Thunder is just around the corner. Let's meet him. The ESPN Eastern Division Heavyweight Championship coming up for 10 rounds. Let's go to Michael Buffer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, men, your battle stations. This bout is scheduled for 10 rounds, and it is for the ESPN Eastern Final in the Heavyweight Division. The referee for this bout is Tony Perez. And now introducing first in the red corner, 
He's wearing the black trunks with white trim. He weighs 211 pounds even. Originally from North Carolina, now living and training in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, he is undefeated in 11 consecutive bouts, nine knockout victories. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesse Thunder Ferguson. And his opponent in the blue corner. He's wearing the green trunks with white letters and weighs 242 and one quarter pounds. From Columbus, Ohio, his professional record, 18 victories, only two losses and one draw, 14 big knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, James Buster Douglas. Well, the two big guys are ready as Tony Perez will be somewhat dwarfed by these two, but a very important man in the oh, ring so tonight. Give me a good, clean fight, and I will not bother any one of you, all right? Give me a good, clean fight. You scored a knockdown, I'm going to put you in the fighter's ultra corner. Stay there, I don't come out until I tell you, all right? Now 40 seconds. The bell will not save anybody from being knocked out, all right? So fighter in the floor, please don't come into the, run, into the ring. That calls for disqualification, I hate to do that. So let the fighter get up, start walking to his corner, then you can assist them, all right? Any questions? Shake hands, good luck to possible. Instructions given as you take a good look at Jesse Thunder Ferguson again. He won in the fourth round. A big left hook sent Richard Scott to the canvas and into their fight. While on that same night, it took only three minutes and one second officially. At the end of the round, it was James Douglas sending Deion Simpson to the canvas with a big right hand. Two-fisted fighter in Ferguson. Big right hand by Douglas. Which of the bombs will fall first? Let's find out as we're underway in round one. Douglas in that interview hit on something rather important when he said he's a world-class fighter. He's close at least. He's faced good heavyweights. Beat Randy Cobb back in 84. Uh, and uh, yeah, of course, she saw him beat Simpson in the tournament. He's beat some other good heavyweights. So for, for Buster Douglas, I think the level of competition may be a little bit better than Jesse Ferguson. James, by the way, in that fight against Randy Cobb, had only three days' notice as Cobb's opponent fell out and uh, Douglas was put into the breach, and boy, did he take advantage of that. That was in November of 1984, 10-round decision over Cobb in Las Vegas. Douglas in the green, Ferguson in the black. These are the big guys in the heavyweight division of the East waiting for their shot at Tony Anthony, who's already won over in the West. Some people surprised to see Ferguson here. Uh, Richard Scott, his first-round opponent, was considered a, maybe a dark horse candidate to do well. Oh, right hand hurt Douglas. Douglas backpedaling, trying to get off the ropes, and Ferguson goes right back in on him. Oh, another right hand. Oh, now Ferguson looked like he was in trouble, but he just stumbled for a moment. Boy, he has both of them reeling there for a moment out. He has let Buster Douglas know that he might be 30 pounds less, but he can punch with authority. Ferguson, 11-0 with nine knockouts. 18-2-1, 14 knockouts for Douglas. Don't go too far away from the TV set tonight as the heavyweights are battling here in Atlantic City. Ferguson again, who stunned Douglas just moments ago. Now Douglas seems to have regrouped himself. Left hook followed with the right. And Ferguson is not throwing a lot of combinations, but when he does punch often, it's one or two or three punches at a time. Good body work by Ferguson. Minute to go. Ferguson, by the way, learned most of his fighting skills in the Marines. He started fighting, walked into the Marine Corps gymnasium, was going to play a little basketball. Don't get out of the way of him. <laughs> Picked up boxing, even though he went on for his amateur career of 23 and 9, won two AAU titles, both in Hawaii. While in the Marines, Ohio State. Fairgrounds Championship. Again, just getting on track as a pro, but unbeaten in 11 fights. 30 seconds to go in the first. Ferguson keeping his hands, there's the left hand a little bit low. Jesse's keeping his hands up high, doing a pretty good defensive job against uh, Douglas. Douglas a little bit taller than two at 6'4". Ferguson at 6-1. Douglas, by the way, was an outstanding basketball player for his home school, Columbus. Oh, he but just hurt he's trying Ferguson to prove bad. Big boxing fans as Ferguson's almost wow. out of his feet. That right hand hurt Ferguson really badly. Douglas just waded in, and Ferguson in his corner here. It's a good, buddy.
Fisher along with Roman Fuller work on Ferguson in the corner. Time, let it happen, okay? You switch on the other side to James Double Douglas. Right. right hand. Right, baby. Double stick right hand. Relax. Relax. And with his back to you is John Johnson, who's a former assistant football coach at Ohio State. Get a champ. Get after him. Get after him. Get a champ. Now the manager of James Douglas. Douglas came to him and wanted Johnson to take over his career a lot earlier than he did. He looked at him, he weighed 270, he says, you lose 30 pounds and we'll talk. He did, and they now are hooked up, and he's the one that set up the cop fight for him. And how well has uh, Ferguson shaken things off? I mean, he literally was out on his feet at the end of that last round. Well, how about the first round with that flurry at the end by Douglas? Did it save the round for him? Yeah, it did, it did in my estimation, though. Ferguson had a good round because Douglas had landed good shots early in the round, too. The middle of the round belonged to Ferguson. But the question now is, will Ferguson be able to stand another right like that? Of course, Ferguson, I thought, stunned Douglas a little bit at the beginning of that last round, uh, at the beginning of the first round. You know, Douglas used to be trained by his father, Billy, who was a very fine light heavyweight, and they just kind of mutually decided that that wasn't working out as well as it should, and father-son combos in boxing are tough to make work anyway. Dad's a supporter now, but not a trainer. And that was when Johnson figured, uh, came into the picture. Billy Douglas, a light heavyweight contender back in the 60s. Very good fighter. He and James says, sometimes you just can't see the forest for the trees. You don't know how good you are, how bad you are in some respects. And you have to get some outside interest, and that's exactly where they've gone. And maybe it'll pay some dividends here. Douglas has a good jab, and you see him using a kelp set up to right hand. Douglas, though, he weighs 242. He's getting more solid as time goes on. He's getting in better and better shape, and you can see his weight will probably come down some more. And, uh, and he is looking a lot more solid than he has in some other fights. Solo effects heavyweight championship in June. Tony Anthony against the winner of this fight. Douglas is really starting to get to Ferguson with those right hands and a good uppercut by Douglas. And digs to the body. Douglas starting to sit down with that 242 and a half pounds against 211 for Ferguson. Ferguson not nearly as aggressive. There was a good left hook, but not throwing as many punches as he did earlier. $11,000, new automobile, and some vacation time in one of our resort cities around the country. Waits the winner of each of our weight classes, including this, the heavyweights in June. Douglas doing some holding behind the head, pulling Ferguson in, trying to use that weight and that power. It's an illegal tactic, and you may get a warning from Tony Perez on it. Well, Ferguson has survived so far in the second round. The boy, considering how he looked at the end of the first, you, have to, you had to wonder if he would be able to do that. Just a moment of carelessness, as it was called in his corner. Almost proved to be disaster, though, at the end of the first. As Ferguson stumbled to his corner, almost fell onto his stool. Revive, and you see him fighting here at the end of round two. And for James Buster Douglas, had the right hand at the end of the round. At the end of round one, this is the right hand that really hurt Jesse Ferguson, that uppercut. And he just kind of hung there in the air after Douglas went away. <laughs> well, that was an oldie but gutty that Douglas would like to find once again as he comes out throwing once again. By the way, Douglas does have that kind of power with an uppercut. Leroy Diggs, all 235 pounds of him, came completely off the canvas with an uppercut by Douglas, maybe one of the most illustrious punches he's thrown in his early career. And you saw that... Uh, Ferguson felt a great deal of that at the end of round one. This is round three. Douglas put a couple of good wins together. He beat Leroy Diggs, then Jesse Clark. In fact, twice he beat Jesse Clark in that same period. So he's faced some good journeyman heavyweight. One of the blots on his record of draw with Stefan Tongstad, uh, a fighter who now resides in Chicago, fought him in 1982 in the Windy City. Right Chicago. No, I won't go into that. Douglas just kind of mauling with Ferguson here in the third. Both these heavyweights getting a little bit fatigued early. Now, Ferguson is getting a little bit more aggressive at this point than he was in round two. He had a round to get his confidence back. He's fighting a little more like he did in round one. Tony Perez, the referee, you may have just heard slightly in the background to push your way out. 
get some punching room, and the heavyweights do. Halfway through the third. It's almost a fact now, Al, that whoever's going to get off first is going to suddenly start taking total control of this fight because both are kind of laying back waiting for the other. I think that's a very good observation, and I... I with heavyweights, that's always the problem, right. getting them to get off first. Now, Ferguson is doing some real good body work. Or is a good left and right hand. That's what we're talking about. If he can come in with that kind of combination, Douglas could be in some problems. Douglas just kind of resting on the ropes there, but he took a good combination from Ferguson that time. And Jesse's mixing his attack to both the body and the head. This is the way he started off fighting in that first round before he got stunned by Douglas. A very interested viewer tonight is Tony Anthony, who's already wrapped up the West even though he fights out of Detroit. Michael Greer, the man he was set to fight, had indicated the top rank. He has to have a honey operation and had to withdraw from the tournament. So Tony Anthony, by default or otherwise, is in the finals. That will beat the winner of this fight. Now, Jesse Ferguson is giving Douglas lots of head movement, bending at the waist better, and coming in winging shots to the body and the head and throwing a good left hook to the head. So that's giving Buster some, some problems right now. Tell you what, that body work by Ferguson could pay some real dividends if, if this fight continues. Ferguson, again, you see some good hand speed by the big guy out of Philadelphia as he lands a couple of good sharp punches on Douglas's face. Je Jesse Ferguson in the last round was able to throw this combination, a left hook and a straight right hand. And we talked about it. He's punching in combination a lot more now. But Buster Douglas came out trying to establish things here in the fourth. We're on the fourth of this scheduled ten rounder. Again, they fought eight rounds, or at least were scheduled to do so in the first round of the heavyweights. Now they move up to ten, and the championship will go twelve if it's needed. Now, well, how about the first three rounds? Your score? I've not. Oh, good right hand. Maybe I've academic got, here. Huh? Well, it could be. I've got <laughs> Douglas ahead two to one. I gave the last round to Ferguson. I think something's going to start happening now, though. They've both uh, come out for this fourth round like they want to really uh, end things. Douglas's camp indicating to shorten up your punches. Stop trying to loop so many big rights and left hooks. Throw some more straight punches and see if we can get this guy in trouble. You know, a key here, I think, is that Ferguson is really bending more coming in, giving him more head movement and, and throwing his punches from a little bit lower and not standing straight up to get hit with that straight right hand. You're just joining us, Jesse Ferguson, in the black. In the green is James Douglas, Eastern Division Heavyweight Finals. Winner here goes on for the championship in the heavyweight division. Ferguson can't back up against Douglas. When he does that, he's in trouble. Right? He's, he's not that adept at fighting backwards. Look for the uppercut, too, from Douglas. It's the one that got Ferguson in trouble. And by bending down so much, Ferguson is a target for it. I might be something wrong with the left eye of Ferguson. Maybe yeah. a thumb. As if he might have caught a, a, a glove in the eye there. See Douglas just kind of mauling in at 242 and a quarter. Good counter right by Ferguson. He's not punching very well off those ropes. Strange posture for him to be in. And Tony Perez is letting him fight in there even though not much is happening. Made mention of the amateur record of Ferguson. Douglas's amateur record, 90 victories, eight losses. Three Golden Gloves titles fought for the United States in 75 on the Junior Olympic team as a 15-year-old. National State Fair winner in Ohio. As I pointed out, football and basketball player in his high school at Columbus McKinley High. One of the things about amateur records of, of pros, good right by Ferguson, is they're deceiving because there are so few heavyweights in the in the amateurs. So oftentimes you can walk through, I'm not suggesting that Douglas wasn't a good amateur, but you can walk through competitions practically, maybe have one fight, and uh, it's not as, I don't think as difficult for heavyweights as, as amateurs. Jesse Ferguson again, who had Douglas in some trouble after he himself was almost decked at the end of round one. They're finishing up. Closing moments of round four here. Good luck there at Buster Douglas. God-given name is James. He comes out against Jesse Thunder Ferguson in the black. Both these fighters looking for a victory as we move into round number five. And for a fight that uh, nobody thought was going to go this long, uh, it's now starting to settle into something, and uh, this might be a situation where we're going the distance. I don't know. Douglas starting to get off early again here, Al, and this is the fifth round. 
He has been told he's got to carry the fight into Ferguson a little bit more, so he's at least trying to lead with that left uh, a little bit more and follow with a right hand. Ferguson is, is using that left hook a lot, but missing with it, because I think part of the reason is he's not setting it up well, and he's not working his way, and he's just looping in with that left hook. He's also totally abandoned his body attack. With heavyweights, it's always a question of consistency. You see a heavyweight who looks so good in one round, and the very next round will turn around and disappoint you. Or one punch will one turn it. Punch, yeah. Oh, they both missed left hooks, and boy, those have landed. I mean, we might have had a double knockout. That helped the air conditioning a bit it here. Sure did. Beautiful new show theater where Joan Rivers will open up for Caesars tomorrow. Can we talk? Catch you. Anyway. <laughs> you probably will. <laughs> I kept telling this was the highlight event. I mean, Joan Rivers is, you know, okay, but this is the highlight. We're opening it here for Absolutely. Circus Maximus Show Theater. Seats over 1,100. And it's a beauty. We're glad to be here at Caesars in Atlantic City. Hope you are too, Sam Smith, along with Al Bernstein tonight. Ferguson, who showed a little problem with the left eye does not appear to have that now. If he might have been thumbed back in the, around the third or fourth round. Trying to go downstairs. Got a pretty good left hook inside on Douglas that time. Douglas throwing a lot of punches, but Ferguson blocking, blocking most of them with the gloves easily. Most of those jabs not getting there. That was a right rather low by Ferguson, but if you had the right idea, going back to the body of Buster Douglas. Half a minute to go in round number five as we near the halfway point of the scheduled 10 rounder. Douglas going right to word on Ferguson. After a couple of early knockouts, TKOs to be exact in our program tonight, they expected these heavyweights to throw the big bombs early. Maybe they're just getting warmed up as we'll move into round six and see what falls in a moment. We'll find out exactly if sparring over a hundred rounds by James Douglas has helped in his stamina as he comes out of the green, boxing here in the sixth. Ferguson goes right after him as they both try to get off early here. Again, keep in mind, if you were with us very early in the fight, an uppercut by Douglas, almost into this one in the first round for Ferguson as he got hit with the uppercut just above his own stool. At the end of round one, one minute rest period helped him. He came out fighting well in the second. As this fight goes on, uh, the edge would seem to go to Douglas because uh, Ferguson's only been eight rounds and only that once, whereas Buster Douglas has been a 10 round limit a couple of times, it's been nine and uh, he may have more stamina going into those later rounds. A little crisp uppercut that time by Ferguson, backing Douglas up for a moment, but he comes back in brawling. All right, pass, Greg, Greg. Comes right back with that looping right hand after Tony Perez has pushed him towards the center of the ring anyway. Well, just ahead, we still have more on top rank boxing. We'll go from the big guys to the featherweights. The North American Boxing Federation champion Jackie Beard against upset-minded Anthony English. That's still to come here on top rank boxing from Caesars in Atlantic City. Douglas just banging in on the ribs of Ferguson. Tony Perez has had enough of that, breaks him out, but Douglas goes right back to work again. Ferguson has fought so much of this round off the ropes, and it's not his forte. There may be some signs of fatigue on his part. Douglas leaning on him, using those 242 pounds to wear him down. And if you don't think 242 pounds leaning on you can wear you down, take a couple of 100-pound cement bags, put them on one on each shoulder, and walk Ooh, around. Hey, he one. hurt Douglas now with the right hand on the inside. In Boy, it was hard to see that was a short right hand, but he stunned Buster Douglas with that punch. 
Yeah, he comes out swinging with a left-right combination, and Douglas is now the one, yeah. just trying to cover up. He throws Douglas him off, flings him down. Best two out of three falls is not counted here. Well, no, Douglas is doing a lot of holding, but that that little move may have given Buster Douglas a chance to re recoup a little bit. Big Good left hook again by Ferguson. Douglas coming back with a combination and then goes right back into the clinch. You see the waning moments here of the sixth round, which looked like a waltz for about the first two minutes and 45 seconds, but boy, what an explosive finish indeed. As Ferguson clocked Douglas, got him off his back anyway, and then they fought toe-to-toe -to, -toe -to, -to, to the end of the round. He's tired, Jesse. He's tired, believe it. I am too, I am too. All right, we'll take your time, take your time. If you're in condition, we know it. I know it. Turn your plan on. Turn it on, Jesse. What are you supposed to do? Stay off the ropes? Yeah. Well, stay off the ropes. I'll tell you, stay in the center of the ring. So I want you in the center of the ring. You guys don't have a chance if you're not on the ropes, Jesse. Stay in the center of the ring. Your face in the center of the ring, okay? Yeah, relax. Now relax. You want this thing? Yeah. You go out and get it. Look at the guy chase you around. Yeah, come on, you're letting me ring you. You want something against these ropes? Yeah. You hear? Yeah. You want this thing? Fighting. Fighting. You want to take it? Car, baby. You want the car? Yeah, you want all this shit? Let's get it then. Let's get it and go home. Right. We're going to get him? Stick hard. All right, let's go get Stick him now. Work behind his head. We did a lot of hard work for this fight. Don't let it get away from me. You got the guy. You saw the people working in the corner for Jesse Thunder Ferguson. The manager trainer actually is Bowie Fisher. Roman Fuller, Quentin uh, McCall is in there. But again, Bowie Fisher is the man who does most of the talking to his man, Ferguson, who comes out fighting here in the seventh round. Well, I just thought, to me, that that is when the drama in between the corners becomes fascinating. He said, I'm tired too, huh? Yeah, he did. And uh, look at my scoring, and I think things evening up a bit. Douglas had three, two, and one. And, uh, you know, I think Buster Douglas has thrown more punches, but for, uh, by and large, Ferguson uh, has had certain rounds where he has hurt him, and uh, maybe that is winning him a couple of those rounds. We'll see. We don't know how the judges are having This, without a doubt, if you follow boxing itself on a 10-round fight, they say six, seven, and eight. Oh, almost through the ropes. Thank goodness for strong ropes. Two heavyweights crashing in. Six, seven, and eight are the do or die rounds. Now, a lot of those that say, well, nine and 10 are important too, but this is when a fighter really has to take control of he's going to at all. I think it, it sets a tempo for those final two rounds, right? And uh, right now, Jesse Ferguson, again, moving his attack to the body, which I think is not a bad idea for him. And they're both digging down, they're both tired. And Ferguson admitted it, and uh, Douglas looked a little fatigued. This is when, as they said, how much do you want it? They said to. Uh, Douglas in his corner, you want the car, referring to the Buick that uh, the winner of this <laughs> tournament will get. And uh, he said, yeah, I want it. Well, it's either luxury or ride home on the bus, I guess will be the best way to describe that. It is more or less winner take all here. The winner moving on against Tony Anthony for the ESPN uh, Solo Flex Championship in June, which by the way will be here in Atlantic City. Ferguson standing straighter now than he was in the mid, in the second, third, and fourth rounds when he was bending at the waist and uh, getting inside a little more effectively. Great thing about watching okay, boxing on ESPN is the good close looks that you look at the faces of the fighters. You can see that fatigue or the determination or bewilderment in some cases of some of the fighters, and that's what just adds that moment of dimension to our fights here on ESPN. Thirty seconds to go, and this the seventh. It appeared that Ferguson might come out and punctuate the seventh, but Douglas is pretty well wrestle command back again here near the end. The heavyweights fighting for the Eastern Division title. Atlantic City and fought through seven, eight in a moment. Buster Douglas used to play football, but that's a pretty good block he put on him. <laughs> Buster grimacing, saying, what's going on here? This is the eighth, scheduled for 10. Eastern Division Championship for the heavyweights. James Douglas in the green and the black is Jesse Ferguson. Good right hand by Ferguson sends Douglas back into the ropes. He clinches to cover up more punches. 
This fight is living proof. You never know when a fight's gonna go 10 and when it isn't. Oh, hold it, hold it, nothing, hold it, nothing. Hold it. You could have almost taken a pretty good bet here at ringside that this one was not going to be a possibility of a 10 rider, and certainly it still doesn't have any guarantees of such, but many yeah. didn't think it'd be fast five. Oh, I think most people didn't think it would go this far. And both fighters have been stunned. Uh, Ferguson literally out on his feet at the end of the first round, okay, right. but uh, Buster Douglas not able to take advantage of that second round. Douglas again had to work only the first round against Deion Simpson with a big right hand ending that one. A left hook finally sent Richard Scott to the canvas by Ferguson in his four-round TKO in their semifinal round. And boy, what a difference uh, some, a few seconds makes. Let's assume that uh, Douglas had landed that uppercut maybe 30 seconds earlier in that first round. I think it is highly likely he would have put Ferguson away. Halfway through this, the eighth. Douglas's corner seemed rather confident that he had control of the fight out. Ferguson's corner still, of course, trying to get him to go, even though he still admits that he's very, very tired. But Douglas's corner seeming rather confident. If he can just stay in and just kind of maul with him, he's got a good shot at winning this thing. Well, it may have, it may be boiling down to what I talked about in the open, which is Douglas just being a little bit better as a technical fighter. He just has a few more ring skills than Jesse Ferguson, and in the long run, those are the kinds of things that tend to win you decision. Ferguson has done a good job to the body of Douglas, but hasn't really slowed him down that much. Good right hand to the body of Ferguson. And how much are the judges giving him benefit of the doubt on those? I think a punch to the body counts just about as much as a punch to the head. Absolutely. You know, some judges don't, don't see it that way. Ferguson, who told us he had some good power in both hands, has indicated he does throw some good combinations and has put them together probably even better than Douglas so far tonight. And even as he gets tired of those combinations are still there, maybe they don't have the same power they did, but at least the combinations are trying. Waiting seconds of the eighth. Douglas and Ferguson still won to be named the Eastern King. Well, as you get a good look at six foot four James Buster Douglas coming out against six one Jesse Thunder Ferguson. Those two heavyweights still have yet to settle anything, and we move into the ninth round. Scheduled ten rider for the East Championship. Well, how about the first uh, rounds through eight? How do you see it? Got it pretty close. Four, three, and one. I gave the last round to Ferguson. I thought he did good body work and uh, was pretty effective. There's Ferguson getting off early again here in this round, in round number nine, as he did at the start of eight. It's a hard fight to judge. It really is. And I think what we're going to see is some very disparate uh, scoring. I think we're going to see some with one fighter winning big and another maybe close. Probably, if you're going to see a fighter who gets the edge bigger than you think, I think it would be Douglas. Uh, some of those rounds I get to Ferguson very close, but I just thought he did a little bit more. And look at the body work. Jackson Ferguson's going downstairs pretty well. And Buster has not been that consistent over the last round or so. It was rather interesting as you see Douglas leaning in on Ferguson. Both of the Western semifinals went to a decision, as a matter of fact, with Greer and Anthony both getting decisions while both here in the East were knockouts. Now, of course, we have seen this one look as a peer. It might go to a decision after two early knockouts by the two combatants. Good counter right by Ferguson. And, you know, it's funny. His people don't want him on the ropes, and yet in Douglas's corner they said, don't let him sucker you into getting in there when he's on the ropes. So they both really want the same thing. Maybe they ought to exchange notes. Yeah, I think they should. Ferguson, you see him trying to get off first again. All right. It's worth noting that Ferguson, as I said before, has never been to the ninth round, and yet he's looking pretty fresh here. Maybe the fresher of the two. Douglas, who is own manager, John Johnson, said still has to lose probably 15 or 20 pounds or so. Carrying around that 242, and again, that could take its toll here as Ferguson. Still throwing punches rather well in the night. Douglas just mauling at the moment. You know, Tony Perez may want to take a firmer hand here to break these two fighters more often because they're doing a lot of waltzing around. Good body work. You can see Ferguson. Now, Buster Douglas hasn't thrown that many punches in this round. 
So with your scoring, it very easily could be going 4-4-1 into the 10th. Huh? I will have it that way unless something dramatic happens here in this, the end of this round. Again, that's unofficial. The judges may be seeing it a little bit differently. Okay, great. If there was a different way to look at it, I could see the edge uh, going maybe to Douglas. A different way to look at this fight as well is to keep in mind that Douglas caught Ferguson with an uppercut at the end of the first round, and it was almost over at that point. But it wasn't, and here we are. As there's the bell, and it ends round number nine. And two weary heavyweights will slump slowly to their stools in their respective corners as they get ready for the tenth and final round. We're in the corner of Jesse Ferguson. Yeah. chance the guy got is when you tie you on the ropes just and try to rest. Stand in the center of the ring. You got to give me this round. I got to have this round. You know what I'm saying? We need this round back. Come on, if you want it, baby, you got to go take it now. Three minutes now. Damn it, if he wants it the most. Kick this guy's ass. Come on, Come on. bring yourself back. Suck it up right now. Mm -hmm. Cut it off. Mm -hmm. Cut it off mm -hmm. right now. Come on. Just like That's you just right. starting now. Cut it off. Come on. All right, let's go to work. Me and you now. This is it, Buster. Well, there's no more strategy to be had, Albert. Seeing it is suck it up and get into the ring for the 10th and final round. And I think that's exactly what it is, Sam. They've seen what the other can do. For Ferguson, and you see what he wants to do, he went right for the body of Buster Douglas. Now, I mentioned it earlier. How much credit is he getting for those body shots? Um, you can look back at even, a lot of heavyweight fights have revolved around that. I remember when, look, good left to the body. I remember when Kenny Norton fought Jimmy Young for the title. Norton landed practically nothing to the head, all body shots, and yet they gave him the fight. And uh, that may be what Ferguson needs here. This is heart. This yeah, is guts right, right now. The tenth and final round. Douglas retaliated well there. He may have stunned him with that right because Ferguson moving back on those ropes. Al, how about the tenth? Is, did we say it was going to be right at the uh, even mark? Can't be more there even as far as I'm concerned. I've got this one dead even. And in this 10th round, they're fighting like they believe it could be even. Early, Ferguson very effective. Now Douglas coming on a bit. The Thunder has rumbled a couple of times, but maybe it was an electrical storm. Buster has busted a couple of shots, but they didn't have the real power to put the man away. So here we are in the 10th. Good counter right there by Ferguson. He's done that in spots. Not as much as I think he would like. Halfway through the 10th. I don't know if from Ferguson's standpoint, if he can afford to be backing up and languishing on those ropes. Just the appearance of it, whether Douglas is winning, his landing punches or not, hurts him. Okay, break! Ferguson's had a hard time landing shots to the head. That's why he's going down for the body now. Boy, it's a close round. So as we had officially have it, even here at ringside, and this 10th and final round really hasn't settled much yet. Very close round. They're both tired to see Ferguson lunging, and you know what, for his first 10 rounder, Ferguson has uh, done well in these last couple of rounds. All right, Frank, come on. Douglas, of course, had been 10 a couple of times. Tony Anthony, the Western winner already. As Michael Greer, the man he was scheduled to fight, drew, withdrew because of a hernia operation. And now Anthony waits the winner of this one. Good counter right as Douglas came in with his own right. And boy, who do you like in this round? It's a tough one. Now you got to be looking at an even round here, too. It's possible, and uh, I don't know what that'll do to the overall scoring. Again, the judges might have already had a preference going into this round. Well, they won't lack for our heart, our desire, but again, the punching power was just not there in the 10th round for either fighter. As James Douglas goes one way and Jesse Ferguson the other. Ferguson met in center ring by Bowie Fisher, his manager trainer. And Douglas again from Columbus, Ohio at 25 years of age. Ferguson at 28. And now they have got to wait for the decision on tonight's fight.
Douglas again, 18-2-1 with 14 knockouts. His 15th one would not come tonight. And Jesse Ferguson again from Philadelphia at 28 years of age. He is undefeated in 11 fights with nine knockouts. As you get the emotion from both of these fighters here in the ring as they wait for the tabulation of the cards. By the way, that championship between Tony Anthony and the winner of this one will indeed be coming up in the month of June here in Atlantic City. The winner and winner take all $11,000, a brand new Buick automobile and a little rest time as the Solo Flex Championship will be decided and one of those will be taking away all of the loot on that particular night. But that's still down the road and our decision is still to come here. I'd like to remind you, still ahead for us is the North American Boxing Federation champion, Jackie Beard, who comes in here with a very impressive 26 and one record, goes up against Anthony English. English coming off a 10 round win, however, and a most impressive one over Juan Below, who himself was waiting for a title shot. That was his last outing, so English may have something in the bag for Jackie Beard. That's still ahead here on Top Rank Boxing. As the tabulation still going on, Michael Buffer will gather it and we'll find out which one of these men, James Douglas or Jesse Ferguson, will advance. They have been tabulated. Here is Michael Buffer with the official decision on tonight's heavyweight fight for the Eastern title. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a decision. It's a majority decision. Let me give you the official scoring. Judge Rocky Castellani scores it five rounds to five even. Judge William Kostrov scores it seven rounds to two, one round even. And Judge Richard F. Murray scores it six rounds to three, one round even for the winner, who is now the ESPN Eastern Heavyweight Champion, Jesse Thunder Ferguson. Well, those body shots apparently did take their toll, and the judges may have been watching as well as we had a dead even going to the tenth. And Jesse Ferguson is the Eastern Division ESPN Heavyweight Champion as he pounds out a decision here tonight, a majority decision over James Douglas, and will advance once again in to the finals in June against Tony Anthony. Well, here's a reminder that the spirit of excellence, if you enjoyed the 1984 Summer Olympics, you're going to enjoy it even more. Starting here on ESPN in July, 16 consecutive days, you'll be seeing, of course, Mary Lou Retton, Edmund Moses, along with Greg Laganis, and all of the other top American stars in gymnastics, track and field, boxing, swimming and diving, the spirit of excellence. The 1984 Los Angeles Olympic Games relived, coming in July on ESPN. Well, Jesse Thunder Ferguson has won the victory tonight, and Al Bernstein waits in the ring with him. Al? Jesse Ferguson, they apparently gave you credit for all those body shots you landed. I wondered what the judges would think of that. You did a great job downstairs. Well, that's what I try to do. But first of all, I'd like to thank Top Rank, everyone who made it possible for me to be here. Mm -hmm. Like I said, to all my sparring partners, friends, family. Like I just say okay. hello. You almost weren't here after that first round. You got hit and really stunned at the end of the first round. You were literally out on your feet. Yeah, yes, I was, but I was aware where I was. Mm -hmm. I took some pretty good shots, and I know he took some, too, because yeah. I had him hurt, too. Yeah. But uh, I weathered the storm and pulled it out. If I could thank God and everybody. Okay. Now, you had never gone 10 rounds before, and you did so in very good fashion. Probably those last couple of rounds helped you pull out the fight, although in, on some of the cards you had a pretty wide margin, but uh, those last couple of rounds were important to you. Well, I'm, I'm, we train mostly for conditioning, mm -hmm. training everybody. And uh, he told me I had to ha have the last three rounds, yeah. and I did put it on, but he was just, he was heavy. He, he yeah, punched he hard, was. but I took a good shot of Yeah. Now, he leaned on you a lot, trying, I guess, to tire you out. Did that bother you a little bit on the ropes? It, it did, it did. If he hadn't leaned on me, I, I would have been way, you know, carried the fight a little bit more fast, but, but he kind of wagged me down a little bit. But I still was throwing punches inside as he was laying on me. Okay, what about next up, Tony Anthony? What do you think of that? He's a... Um, one punch fight, I, I see, only the right hand. I'm going to take the fight to him, too, and whatever happens, okay. it just happens. All right, congratulations. Thank you very Let's much. Let's go back to ringside, Sam Smith. We have settled the finalists once again as Tony Anthony and now Jesse Ferguson have moved themselves into the final for the ESPN Solo Fakes Championship in June on ESPN. Stay tuned now for Jackie Beard here in Atlantic City.